Kit never listened. Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Traps and today we are playing Life is Strange 2. It's been a while since I recorded this, but let's continue, alright? I remember having already shown this room, so let's get dressed and look for Daniel. He's at the neighbor, so he has to be somewhere over there. Why am I a little bit more quiet than usual? Okay. Time to get Daniel at the Arrogance. Oh, this is gonna go so wrong. <laughs> Daniel doesn't want to hide his powers. Claire? Steven? Uh-oh. Anybody home? That sounds like problems. Well, like the train tracks though. Looks like I'm home alone. Looks like it, yeah. But you're fine, I'm sure. And oh, right. Sunday morning. Claire and Steven. Oh right. They have to be. Probably are, yeah. Guest room. Nice little hanger by the door. Steven and Claire are gonna freak if they realize he went to the Ericsons. Yeah, they will. Just like you are right now. Is there nothing here to explore at all? Hmm. Alright. Ah, Christmas tree. That looks nice. We had a good time decorating the tree together last night. I can imagine, yeah. I loved it. <laughs> of course he did. Anything around here, perhaps? I don't think I'd seen the shark before. Can't look at it, though. Mm -hmm. I could just delete my browser history after I'm done. That's not enough, but okay. Jeez. Seattle shooting. Crazy on us. Seattle blast and shooting. An unresolved mystery. Officer Tanaka holds press conference in s on Seattle incident. SPD is still considering every lead, including terror attack and gang fight. More questions than answers in Seattle incident as friends and neighbors mourn loss of local mechanic. Where are the Diaz brothers? I blacked out, says main witness of the Seattle blast after leaving hospital. Seattle protests, SPD to hold awareness workshop on racial bias. That's a very, very, very good topic. What the hell is this? I had no idea Stephen could fall for this bullshit conspiracy theories. Hey, is anybody following the Seattle shooting incident? There's a lot of weird things going on that nobody can explain. How did the officer, police officer really die? Where did this mysterious explosion come from? How did the fugitive brothers get around? Why are the police being so secretive with details? Discuss. If you have any inside scoop, please post here. I've been all over this. Go to fakeexplosion.url for the full story of this cover-up. The new power plant they want to build in the city is definitely part of this. Looks like they just framed the poor kids too. I saw that surveillance footage and there's no way that was a natural explosion. What's going on in Seattle? Maybe prepping for a false flag operation. I read that the motel owner saw the kids and that he said the kids blew up his toilet. Did you see the news report about the brothers at the gas station? Sounds sketchy. Not everything is a conspiracy, you as wankers. My friend's parents work for the Oregon PD and they say there's a big secret manhunt for the two brothers. I heard they might have been used for experiments, but now they're on the run because the experiments worked and made them dangerous. I know there are experiments going on everywhere because I came from an experiment. Stop lying, people. The internet is full of your bullshit already. Visit Brody's blog. 
if we ever make it home. Wherever that is. This dispatch from off ro the road is a tribute to a couple of new young friends I made on a recent adventure that I've yet to transcribe or even fully process yet. I'll leave the details vague to protect the innocent because believe me, they are not guilty. But let me digress. Wow, normally they don't want to digress. I can't scroll here, by the way. The best part about being a professional traveller, meaning I sometimes make gas money off these dispatches, is the people you meet on the proverbial road. Of course, the worst part about being a professional traveller is the people you meet on the actual road. I've been too lucky for a variety of reasons. Though I've had moments of pants-shitting fear from the highway patrol hiding, following me at night to that weird motherfucker I picked up in Iowa who wouldn't leave the car, read, read that awful account here. Ultimately, I approach strangers as potential friends, if not allies. I'm that naive and stupid that the universe feels sorry for me and lets me skate by as I help people on instinct rather than objectivity. First thought, best thought. I still hear my ex-brother, his choice, telling me years ago that you read all this Kerouac crap about life on the road but you can't even change a tire, asshole. He was right, so I learned how to change a tire. I'm not good at it, so I also have to towing insurance. End of dilemma. However, you can't always give my own I can't always give my own version of roadside assistance including to my young companions who needed it most. I wish I would have done more for them, but maybe even joined their quest, because it's a more important journey than mine. Instead of just pushing a rock up a hill, I could have helped them move mountains out of the way. If we were hanging out again, I would ask you to forgive me for not coming along to offer whatever help I could. Then again, I'm kind of a clumsy dog, and I could have fucked shit up by trying to play saviour. Ah... The paralysis of analysis. My suspicion is that they really didn't need me in the end, just each other. So I'll continue to weave this highway and roadside tapestry, always paying it forward. Call it guilt if you want. I'm still a jeeky, sincere kid who looked up to anybody who wanted to change the world for good, who wanted to move mountains for others. I always wanted to be a car-bound Louis Lane, a roaming reporter getting in the face of this corrupt matrix. Sure, my world cynic knows the system is rigged, that we're screwed and that justice is often just a joke. But when I saw the faces of my wandering friends who went through hell, and are still there for all I know, smiling with childlike gratitude at my most trivial of gifts, I felt ashamed, saddened, there are times when I encounter a little soul last and they flash that wide-eyed, grateful, frightened stare and you feel your heart break into a million pieces. Now I think of all those children out there alone in the night on the precipice, the razor's edge of America and beyond, wanting only the most basic of life's needs like food and pounds. It makes me cry and sick at once. Then I rage, rage at the dying light and vow to do my part. That's the benefit of an activist on views. I always like to think of myself as moving forward, like a friendly shark. Otherwise we don't eat, we don't survive. Now I find myself thinking of the past, wondering if I gave the best advice to those in need. If I even helped those last children of the American night by leaving them on their own. Then I realize that I'm the one who is actually last out here. My friends climbing the hills know exactly where they're going. And I know you're going to make it home. I'd like to plan a visit. Wow. The it sky is much less creepy than it seemed back then. The sky is almost a perfect blue cliche as I pull my very gas beast off the winding Highway 5 into the tiny main vein of Rockville Springs, Wyoming, and at its community head, Pop 472. This is a dark, barren land before time, like any other sleepy town born from the local mine shafts that fed the community, along with the robber barons who owned the oil. The citizens suffered their fair share of tragedy over the decades, but managed to retain a healthy main street with a few thriving shops and services. But by the end of the oil-starved 1970s, the once sleepy town was in a coma after the last drops of the precious earth blood had been mined. 
The company quietly closed shops and left the town and populace to their own devices, which meant most people packed up, closed shop and left forever. Which brings me today to Rockville, to Rockville Springs, Wyoming, population 51. Yet the ghosts who stayed behind to haunt what was left of the town are now stark naked. There was always an eccentric, lynching aura over Rockville Springs, as demonstrated by their very own nudist community, who had been quietly amassing ever since the 1950s after the local oil first gushed from the earth. The town wasn't as religious or conservative as others in the repressive era, so the thought of nude volleyball didn't cause a legal scandal. How could it, when the city's own major was seen or unseen, sunbathing in his birthday suit? So therefore, nobody gave a rat's ass about even for though they could see everybody's ass. When the majority of the time was abandoned, the nudist community saw this as their chance to pursue the end goal of their lifelong dream. A naked public sphere free of moral judgment. It sounds kind of nice, though I'm not really into nudism, personally. If you are, fine by me. Enjoy it. But back in the future, e 2016, the leftover, forgotten and unclothed residents of Rockville Springs have come under some misguided public and political attacks for their own natural lifestyle. Thanks to smug media reports, curious visitors now drive through the depleted main street not to get a cut of the damn fine pint coffee at the Red Ca- Raw Cafe. Tell them Brody sent you. But to giggle and take selfies with the new townspeople as their background props is rather gross to witness as I did in my brief drive through report that there is no doubt some members of the town welcome the tourists because they spend money. There's that old expression, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Ironically, I'd heard about Rocky Field Springs in my travels and vowed to stop there someday if only to satisfy my need to see a 56-year-old naked man change the oil in my car. Then I had a boring epiphany. How do you talk to a naked person? I found it how you just talk. You don't forget that they're not wearing clothes, but you actually end up being embarrassed that you are. The people I saw and chatted up didn't even have any particularly unique insights into the world or geopolitics. As the mechanic told me, I give him taxes. Don't ask me to vote for the bastards, too. Ironically, some tended to be quite conservative. They just wanted to not pay taxes without clothes. Others seemed to stay out of sight with the crowds around, which makes the recent media circus more insulting, since the tone of the reports is always a condescending, oh, look at the funny people with sagging flesh, cooking eggs and jogging down the road. And full disclosure, I admit that the former Brody would have been one of those same judgmental assholes. Glad I'm not him anymore. Okay, take a breath, my dude. I'm not saying this mild condemnation is a great threat to liberty. We obviously have worse going on in this big country, but it's always a revealing microcosm of how we treat each other in all our naked hypocrisy. Wow, I don't think I even misspoke there. Interesting. Ah, we did this already. Stephen went search crazy on us. Log in. Holy shit. Who are these assholes? Cop killer. Fucked up hate speech. You can run, but you can't hide. This is what happens when you let cockroaches into the kitchen. I saw your story in news and my heart goes out to you boys. Bless you. Shame on you. They are killers. No, they are kids. I've got a point thirty-eight bullet with you and your brother's name on it. Sleep tight, kids. I know the family of the officer you killed. They're devastated. Thoughts and prayers. No more sanctuary cities. What the hell is wrong with Lila? Thinking of you in these hard Thank times. Be strong, Lila. We miss you. Get well soon. I hope you'll be back soon. We love you, girl. Cray cray much. The park sucks without you. We're bringing your board over. Hey, in case you didn't get my text, I got all your history notes covered. Hope to see you soon. Lila. Lila to check on her. If you call Lila, the police will know where you are. 
You shouldn't call her from here. At all. Go to a random phone on the road. In 2016, those still exist, right? Maybe risky. Let's not. I need to know what's going on with Lila. Mm hmm. I know. But let's not find out. Oh, not this door, then. Dude, move your ass. Who knows what Daniel's doing over there? Yeah, who knows what he's doing? Well, I guess they won't be back for at least two hours. Morning, sleepyheads. We let you sleep in today, unlike. Um, wait, wait, while we're at church. Back by noon for lunch. See you in a bit. Love, Grandma and Grandpa. P.S. The Christmas tree is perfect. Good job, kids. P.P.S.S. Thank you for tidying up a bit. You're welcome. Goodbye. Okay. Let's get this brack back home now. Let's. However, there's one problem. You are being spotted. Right from there. Why does Daniel never listen? Maybe I'm doing it wrong. No, it's a nice junk pile you can look at, apparently. Can I look at it? Yes, yes I can. <laughs> and I thought Daniel was the crafty one. <laughs> it looks nice. It's bigger on the inside. Hmm. What does that remind you of? <laughs> I wonder where the dad is. Oh, nice snowman. Wow. Looks like someone paid the high price here. Definitely. Snowman is a little melty, but I guess it's fine. Was this swing here in the other game? Probably was. I wonder what went on between this kid and his dad yesterday. You will never know. Pretty weird. It was, but his dad is kind of weird. So don't worry about that. Curtains are still closed. Maybe the dad is still asleep. I wouldn't be surprised. Steven and Claire are gonna freak if they realize he went to the Ericsons. Oh, we remember these cartons. We definitely remember them. Wow. That's a lot of beer. It is a lot of beer. Guess who it does that? Daniel, what's going on here? Sean, wait. Don't freak out. I can explain. Let me tell him. Sean... I know it sounds crazy, but I have a superpower. You saw me yesterday. I know you did. I was flying. I can move things. Objects. With my mind. Oh. A superpower. Really? Yes. <laughs> That's pretty well, cool. That's pretty cool, Chris. So, you're like a superhero? I'm Captain Spirit. I can bend any matter to my will. But that's my secret identity, so you can't tell anybody. Oh, I can keep a secret, Captain Spirit. Now you're an official member of the Spirit Squad. If you betray us, I'll disintegrate you. <laughs> nah, just kidding. <laughs> oh yeah, we need a... <laughs> Team signal. Totally. I'm gonna be super wolf. Roar. What's your super name, Sean? El Diaz Blow Loco. <laughs> Professor Diaz. Silver Runner. Hmm. Some good choices. I like Silver Runner. But let's go with Professor Diaz. I'm like 
a mentor, like Professor D or something. Uh, yeah. We'll figure out another cool name for you. No, oh, come on, guys. I think we're ready to roll. Uh, excuse me. Who are you? I'm Sean. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, man. You're here for Daniel. Hey, let's make it official. I'm Charles Erickson. Nice to meet you. Hope you know that Daniel and Chris are a dangerous team. We better watch out, or they're gonna take over the world. Yeah. They share a lot of things. As thick as thieves. Can we go get the Christmas tree now? We're both ready. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, you, yes. Uh, the, the team has been you hadn't collected long. it yesterday. Yeah, you should come along too. There's nothing going on over here. Yes! Can't wait to see all the decorations! And Sean, we could buy Christmas presents for Grandma and Grandpa. They'll be worried. Sure. Difficult choices, I must say. I'm not entirely sure, but... Uh, do I, uh, this is, uh, let's not be boring. Um, okay, sure. Social okay. pressure is a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wish Chris and Daniel were excited about going. Okay, team, uh, give me a time out to clean up the back seat. I'll honk when I'm done. Oh, uh, can I use the bathroom? Of course. Oh, you'll see my comic books. I'm glad you're coming too. Hey, you want to see my toys? Oh, score! What is you know Daniel what going to do? Since you're a new member of the team, you have to know everybody. These are Captain Spear's friends and his enemies. Dude, that's pretty cool. Can you guess who are the good guys and the villains? Let's see. No, <laughs> oh my. Um, I remember you are one of the heroes. I remember the bad guys. you to be one of the heroes. Yeah, you are a villain. Not that easy, right? I think the warrior is a hero, and then these two are villains. Careful. It may be tricky. It may definitely be tricky, yeah. Oh, it's the plane! I like okay. it. Okay. How did I do? Not bad. You're almost right. Oh, come on. Okay, let me introduce them to you. This he is still in his role. The oh, the dinosaur! The forest warrior, Power Bear, Marty Rex, and Sky Pirate. Sky so, Pirate, I knew. The bad guys. That's Noctarius and the Shark Stinger. There's also Snowmancer, but he's out in the garden. Captain Spirit, kind of took care of him. He might need a little surgery now. But they're all working for Mantroy, who is the real supervillain. You should see his evil planet. Why doesn't Captain Spirit stop him? He tried, but failed. That's why he needs Super Wolf. You know, Daniel, to prevent Mantroid from hurting other people. <laughs> yeah, strength in numbers. Sounds like Mantroid is in trouble. Just wait until he sees what Captain Spirit can do now. Yeah, <laughs> about that. Does your father know? Does your dad know about any of this? Did he see something yesterday? No, he didn't see anything. And the power didn't work yesterday. After I fell. Uh, must have been too tired. Okay, good. Um, I mean, he could be pretty disturbed if he knew. Um, definitely not telling Dad. That's very smart of you. Freak him out. He's worried about other stuff anyway. Oh, yeah. Cool treehouse. Well, your dad is cool. He totally hooked you up with that treehouse yeah he let steven build it for me it's my flying fortress oh yeah i saw that drawing you made of him with that badass blazing sword i made it to thank him for making the treehouse well captain spirit had to help him of course of course 
Obviously. All hail Captain Spirit. The first and only Carpenter Vigilante. <laughs> There's the Funny. Come on, Daniel. Hey. Pro tip. Don't go in there. Yeah. <laughs> Did you flush? Hey, Let's roll. Am I gonna have to check to see if you flushed? I guess I can't. Okay, that's fine. You need my I don't want you catching another cold. No, I'm good. Thanks. And don't be waving your arms around when I'm driving, okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, remember, Daniel. Don't mess around. All right. Jeez. Thanks for clearing the snow from the porch. You're you're awesome. You're welcome, Dad. Oh yeah, I guess we did that. Everything else is still fully covered in snow, but. I guess we can walk a little bit safely. This makes it seem like it's actually a pretty big place. Right at the entrance. Okay, buddy. You ready? Yeah. No, oh, there was no need for that to be noisy. You guys go ahead and we'll come back to meet you, okay? Brothers meeting. Sure. But Don't get lost. <laughs> Don't get lost. What the fuck are you doing? I can't believe it. How many times do we have to keep going over the rules? Don't show the power. I know. But Chris thinks he can do all this cool stuff. I wish he could. He reminds me of Noah. I just miss having friends, Sean. Oh my. What do we do? Stop lying to Chris or protect the secret. Let's go with protect the secret. Listen, I understand, but we have to be extra careful out here. We're not even supposed to be here right now. You know the rules. Yes, I know the rules. But I'm careful. I only do things when it's me and Chris. Nobody sees us. Yeah, nobody but me. What if it was Chris's dad? Or grandma? Or a cop? Or... Okay, okay. I get it. But I'm careful. That's not enough. You have to be extra, extra careful. All right. I swear I will. Good job, Daniel. I'm counting on you, Anano. Can I go see Chris now? Yeah, let's go. But don't forget what I said. And he'll use his power right here. I'm pretty sure. Wow. So Welcome, hundred percent American product. Trees, huh? They look like giant cocoons. Bagged trees. What about them? How can they sell so many trees in such a small town? You'd be surprised, but some people actually get two or three or ten trees even. Dad pushed every year to get a plastic tree. <laughs> but we never surrendered. <laughs> Care spray. <laughs> Pretty neat. I like the music here. Is this what they wrap the tree with? You coming, Sean? Don't. Behold. The giant condom machine. Don't oh, worry. funny. I'll be around. Fake snowman. Jeez. Daniel Snowman wasn't that creepy after all. <laughs> Indeed. 
Hello. Open your backpack and check on your objectives. We are just waiting around. <laughs> Looks like someone went nuts over these blocks. Oh, it's funny. What is my objective? Find Daniel a Christmas present. Really? No way. Right. What do we have here? We have the old top. We have this little cocoa disc. DVD player. Or CD player, I guess. The Interstellar Traveler. I used to watch this show when I was a kid. The Creepy Doll. A canteen. A submarine. Oh, this is the submarine from the bathroom. From that house. I think, and this little space scuba camera. Oh, a few more pages. Did we read this? I think we did, yeah. It's a drawing. What the hell, Daniel? The first rule. What was that kid running away from? And did his father see something? Even if he did, he didn't mention it at all. So it should be fine. Oh look, there's more trees here. I wonder what will happen to the trees when no one buys. They'll probably get you know sold another year. Dear Santa, we've been good kids this year. Please explain this hot mess. Hmm. <laughs> That's funny. Sure. I'm Is fine. that a yo-yo? Daniel had one back home. He likes yo-yos. This is so different from Seattle. Don't know if I can get used to it. It's a giant RV over there. We can steal the yo-yo. Let's look around first for a little bit. Whoa. The guy who painted that must have been seriously high. Maybe. Sit and draw. Yes, let's do it. Let's get another drawing done. Perfect. Okay, got it. Let's get as much done as possible. This is actually decent. I wish I had more though, but it's fine. Oh, look at this poster. Too bad we can't come and see. The Beaver hey, Creek, Xmas Qua. December. Main Street, sing the whole family along. How nice. A paper plate. Here you go. She probably needs it more than me right now. Yeah, you can stay at Reynolds. She looks so out of place. We'll eat for food. Cool. Really? That's a funny sign. Oh no, here's the copyrighted music. It's, me, it's not copyrighted. So the morning came and swept the night away 
all the way through. Weird. You got a crush <laughs> on me or something? What? Uh, uh, no, <laughs> That's a I, weird thing to say. I mean, it, it was pretty cool. I I just... <laughs> Relax, dude. It's cool that you listen. People are usually too busy to care. It's a small town. <laughs> this is a small town. They're not used to having street artists and stuff. Yeah, they're not used to many things. Especially seeing new faces on the street. Well, thanks for the music. And good luck. See ya. See ya. Thanks for the music. Indeed. Weird to have all this food around after a month of ravioli dying. <laughs> Haven't you been at the Reynolds for a little while? I miss Dad's Christmas at all. Yeah, can imagine. Hey, hi. Good morning, young man. It's nice to see a new face in this old town. Thanks. It's a super cool market you got here small towns are the best for christmas who are you staying with the reynolds let's just say it's a motel we're just passing through so uh at a motel well i saw you speaking with charles so i thought charles charles not related. We're not related. My brother Daniel's friends with Chris. Gotcha. I like his son. Funny little guy. Despite everything. Anyway, welcome to Beaver Creek. If you need anything, just holler. You don't seem to recognize us. You won't find better deals in Beaver Creek. Or maybe you're all more thinking that this is just not the right place. Oh. A lot of signs. Funny how all small towns always sell the same handcrafted crap. Yeah. I guess so. How about a Christmas card? Hi, everybody. We're taking a year off to run away from cops. Daniel has got telekinesis now. Hope you're doing well. Hmm. <laughs> You should buy one of those cards. Send it to Lila. Hi. This is a nice collection. <laughs> Why, thank you. I make them all myself. Whoa. Must be a lot of work. <laughs> Definitely too much for the money they get me, yes. Uh, how come? How come? Well, people certainly don't buy as much handmade Christmas decorations as they used to. The mall has ruined every single shop in town. Can't do anything about it, and people seem surprised unemployment is going through the roof. Oh, yeah. It's evolving, I guess. I understand. It's just the way it's evolving, you know? <sighs> Trust me, I know. I just wish this evolution could benefit everyone. Anyway, it can. There's better things to do than listening to an old lady ranting about capitalism, right? That's cool. Don't worry. Well, thanks for hearing me out anyway. You have a nice day. You too, madam. We don't have ten bucks. Quiet. We only have what? Nine? Eight. We have eight bucks. Claire and Steven definitely have a kink for Christmas. Bet they like these. Yeah, but we can't afford it. So... What are you up to? I just want to check out this RV. Nope. Man, it would have been so cool to have one of these before coming here. Oh yes, definitely. Still the yo-yo. I, I know it sucks, but Daniel deserves it too, right? Yeah, I think so. Quiet morning. Quiet morning indeed. Alright, find Charles to leave the market. 
Find Charles. Found what you were looking for, city boy? Um, yeah. Something for my little brother. You bought your brother something out here. Damn. Well, we didn't buy it. Sorry. Um, I'm just a grumpy old gal. Me and my friends have been crashing here for the week. Nobody gives a shit about us. Yeah, I can tell you're not from around here. <laughs> no way. No, no way. Just passing through. Ah. You got family. My grandparents. <laughs> you gotta love the grandparents. Of course. About you and your friends. Road trip? Uh, <laughs> not really. We kind of hop from place to place, hunting for little jobs. And <sighs> Must be a long ride. That's okay. We hop on trains. No, oh, you're one of those train hoppers. Awesome. Man, that sounds wicked. <laughs> you have no idea. The thrill of the road. So fucking fun. Well, unless you get caught or fall, but we've been lucky so far. That's the best. Nobody tells us what to do. No corporation owns us. And you get to see so many cool places. Exactly. Next stop is Humboldt County, California. <laughs> Stoner break. Not even close. We actually got work over there. How? Sean, what are you doing? We picked the tree with Chris. It's all crooked like an old witch. Oh, hi. Who are you? <laughs> Ooh, your hair looks so cool. Is it a wig? Daniel. Uh, well, what do you think? Mm, I don't know, but it's really cool. I'm Daniel. What's your name? Hi, Daniel. I'm Cassidy. Oh my god. I think we read about you. Somewhere. It's very dangerous. I can Did tell. we? I hope you get your mission accomplished. Think so. <laughs> and what's your name? Oh, uh, Sean. I. I thought I told you. Now you did. Sorry, you went through some shit with the guys. How much you make? You ready? Hello, pups. Oh, is that your doggy? So cool. Yeah, he's been through a lot. Looks very skinny. Most of us. So we adopted him. And he stinks. Yeah, you stink and you like it, huh? <laughs> well, he's not the only one. Have you checked your hair? I think he just <laughs> twitched. You should keep your distance, dude. Mm. She looks she cool. Looks really cool, I think. See? He knows I'm clean. You're the nasty one. Yeah, you always go for those suburban boys. <laughs> Are you kidding? You want to talk about your scoreboard hotshot? <laughs> hey, no worries. Come on, let's bail. It was nice meeting you, Sean and Daniel. Stay out of trouble, Goodbye. kids. Hope we see you on the rails someday. Yeah. Maybe you will. Your doggy was so cute. I miss Mushroom. I miss her too. Oh, Daniel. Hey, excuse me. Dogs have to be on a leash around here. Too many strays. <laughs> Sorry, dude. We don't do leashes. Well, the city does. An unleashed dog is liable to a fine. So. Uh, you're going to fine our dog? Well, that's not very nice. Loitering is illegal, too. And you don't live here, right? Right? Calm down, sweetie. We're allowed to visit the Christmas market. Our dog's not gonna eat you. Look at him. You better watch your mouth. You punks are always causing trouble. This is a nice town, okay? Jeez. Someone needs to get laid. <laughs> He's out of pills. That's it. I'm calling the cops. Oh, God. He's gonna call the cops on us, Finn. Chill out. We're leaving this shithole anyway. 
You guys don't even have a Santa, for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Fucking parasites. Why did they fight? I don't get why he yelled like that. We should kick his ass, Sean. No, let's not do anything. We can prank him. What's the prank? Let's drop it. Better not get involved, man. This guy... doesn't look nice. You're right. And it's pointless to do things like that. Time to look for... Ah, he's over by the car, it seems. That's nice. I was afraid he would have forgotten about us. Do I talk to you? Hey, you no. guys ready to go? Yeah. All done. Cool. <laughs> Hop in. Hopping in. I hopped in. Are you having too much fun back there? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. That's good. Hello. Hey, we're back. Hope it wasn't too long. Thanks for taking us with you. Looks like Daniel found a new brother. <laughs> no kidding. He dumped me like a rock. I'm glad you two came along. It's great that Chris found a new friend out here. Looks like you did too. What's her name? Who? Who? <sighs> Come on, don't play me. That cutie you were talking to by the market. Oh, yeah, that girl. She was cool, yeah. She was cool. Do too quick. Ah, anyway, got ya. <laughs> it's good for me to get out too. We've had a rough time over the past couple of years. My wife, Emily, she died two years ago. Obviously, uh, it was tough on Chris. Shit. Uh, I'm sorry, man. Thanks. It's been a struggle. Especially trying to be a good dad. Having problems? Doing your best. Having problems? Yeah, some kind of problems. I'm just not the man I was. I shouldn't have even brought this up, you know, just forget it. No, it's fine. No worries. Didn't mean to make you feel bad. We all have our ups and downs, right? Yeah, definitely. Life works. It is. Your grandparents sure did have their share of downs too. They did? Always there for us. For Chris. They seem like good people. Mm, yeah, they are nice. They're so nice, but... Yeah, they had their problems too. <sighs> Sorry for bringing that up. It's okay. I hope they don't stress out because we haven't come back. Uh, yeah, we should get you two home. Uh, don't keep them waiting. Yeah. If they have returned, that is. Hey, buddy. Uh, wanna set up that Christmas tree? Yeah. Well, I'll get there before you with my dad mobile. <laughs> no way you can beat Cassie's spirit. <laughs> See you later, Super Wolf. <laughs> That's nice. That is really cute. 
Really cute. Hello? Hello? They haven't come home yet, it seems. Or something's wrong. Claire? Steven? Looks like Grandma and Grandpa haven't come back from church yet. Well, good observation. Don't yell at us for going out. That was so cool to spend time with Chris at the market. You know Chris's mom was an artist? I didn't. How so? She drew comics. You should ah. see drawings. They're so cool. Just like yours. Thanks, dude. Hey. Uh. What? What is it? Sean? I want to go check on the room. Upstairs. I know it's mom's. Please. Oh, Daniel. <laughs> I will end the episode soon. I know we are overdue. Honestly, I want to have these episodes around 45 minutes. 40 to 45 minutes, but obviously we're already at 50, so. Let's end it quickly. Get to a point where I can end the episode nicely. Let's say no. Daniel, you heard Claire. They will freak out if they know we went inside. We won't tell them. We'll be in total stealth mode. They will arrive when you're in there. It's just... I really want to know what's inside. What kind of stuff she has. Chris has tons of things that belong to his mom. And I have nothing. Come on, Sean. You don't even have to come with me. You don't want to. Fuck it. I'll come with you. So you don't make a mess and get us caught. Well, I guess there's no choice in that then. Right. In we go. It's supposed to be locked though. Sean, this is super easy. I can just break the lock with my power. <laughs> yeah. I could do that with a hammer. Let's try and find the key instead, all right? It would have to be nearby. I'm just gonna clean up real quick. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Sharp objects. <laughs> Bit like Claire. A vanity drawer. Locked drawer. Of course it's locked. Maybe to Karen trinkets inside. Mm. <sighs> Karen hated collecting trinkets. She used to say they were just useless dust traps. No. Yeah, no. no it way. might have been in there. But I got you. How about in here? Don't be shy. There we go. Definitely not the one. Nah, but we know where it goes. Let's see what. How much more Irish can you be? I like it though. Can't we take them? I guess not. Yeah, yeah. Be patient, yes, dude. Daniel. Whoa, I'm just looking for a key, not the crown jewels. <laughs> Ew, are these thief? Milky? Yeah. I'm not sure if it's I might have mine as well, cute. still. But still, no key here. Gears in the future. Okay, Stephen. Where do you hide this key? I have an American dream. We clearly don't share politics, but at least Stephen doesn't preach. Audio tape. I don't really see Stephen listening to old school pop rock music. I wonder what's on it. Yeah, not much to see in here. Sean! I saw Grandma go into the room yesterday. It looked like she left something there, but then she locked the door. Did you see where she put the key? I think uh, she put something in her pocket. <sighs> yeah. Nice. 
Yep. It's empty. Of course it is. Didn't expect it to be in in there anyway. Check this closet first. Clothes, old stuff. <sighs> Definitely no hidden key. She's so organized, and yet we have to look for it, huh? Shit. These are Christmas presents. Let's not tell Daniel. Hmm. <laughs> freak. Yeah. But while I'm looking for the key, let's end the episode. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell in order to be notified whenever a new video comes out. Leave a comment in the comment box below to share your thoughts and feelings. Let me know what you think about the video. Let me know what you think about the game. Let me know what you think about Dan and Sean and Chris and Charles and everyone, basically. My choices in the game. I bet you have some complaints that you would have chosen something else, huh? Yes, yes, of course you would have. That's the fun about this game. Everyone has their own choices. I like to play it a little bit more serious, but you might want to go for the fun options. And I replay it to try out all the other options. Explore the various events and choice trees, I suppose is what it's called. I know, I'm, I'm not good at game terminology. Anyway, share this video with friends and family and brothers and sisters and grandparents and friends and superheroes. Definitely share it with the superheroes. Alright, if you've done that, it's time for me to end the episode. Hope to see you all in the next video. Goodbye.